guys and welcome to another episode of Nugget of the Day. Uh, in today's Nugget 7, our focus is to learn how to draw brachial plexus. Now this is a very common question asked to postgraduate trainees and often we find that they struggle with it. Uh, even though uh, you know we might not be trainees, still the guys um, who are actively practicing anesthetics out there also might be uh, helped uh, by this video. So let's get into it and see what is my way of drawing a brachial plexus. So for the brachial plexus anatomy, uh, you know how I draw it, I think about three Y's and uh, I go about drawing these three Y's uh, in slightly interesting fashion. Uh, first we will draw two Y's um, of the letter X, Y, Z. Uh, and I will draw them uh, from left to right. Uh, so this is the uh, first Y and we'll draw the second Y slightly uh, um, apart from the first Y and now we will draw the third Y facing the opposite direction. So this is the first three Y's. It's easy to understand from this that I'm talking about the five roots C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. Next we need to draw two mathematical signs in the middle of this. One is a multiplication sign and the other is division sign. And towards the right end, I will just draw a sigma sign. It's easy to understand from this diagram that this brachial plexus almost looks like a rocket and therefore I have named it sigma. Now what we need to do is to divide this brachial plexus into certain parts. So the first line of division would come across at the junction of the two Y's. The next line of division comes before and after the multiplication and the division signs. And the last line comes just before uh, the sigma sim symbol. So now we have our brachial plexus which is divided into five parts which are the roots, the trunks, the divisions, the cords and the branches. Now there's a very easy mnemonic remember to drink cold beer and that's how I remember these. Next what we need to know is uh, what are the, uh, uh, how the brachial plexus combines together. So C5 and C6 come together to form the upper trunk while C7 continues as the middle trunk. C7 and C8 nerve roots combine to form the lower trunk. Now each trunk then divides into its anterior and posterior divisions. So that's pretty simple to remember as well and all the three posterior divisions come together to form the posterior cord. So that's again easy to remember. While the anterior divisions of the upper and the middle trunk form the lateral cord, the anterior division of the lower trunk continues downwards as the medial cord. And at the end of the branches, I want you to write down M A R. MU or MARMU. These are the five terminal branches of the brachial plexus and I will come back to them later on. Next we need to know what branches comes from within the brachial plexus and I simply remember them as three triplets and the two lonely guys. So this is the first triplet. That's my first lonely guy. That's my second triplet. That's my third triplet and that's my second lonely guy. So the first triplet, uh, I call them the three S. They are the dorsal scapular nerve, the first lonely guy is the long thoracic nerve and L goes with L so lonely long thoracic. So these are the two nerves that come from the roots. 
Next, two nerves comes from the upper trunk. This is the nerve to subclavius. And the third one is the suprascapular nerve. So that completes the first triplet, all starting from S. Now the uh, second lonely guy that comes from the cords is the lateral pectoral nerve. The next triplet is the three SS or the subscapular nerves which are the upper, middle and lower subscapular nerves. The middle subscapular nerve is also called the thoracodorsal nerve. The last triplet all starts from M, the medial pectoral nerve, the medial brachial cutaneous nerve and the medial anti -brachial, uh, brachial cutaneous nerve which is the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Now it's also important to remember that all of these five parts of brachial plexus lie against certain anatomical structures. Roots lie near the upper neck, trunks near the lower neck, divisions are hidden behind the clavicle and therefore divisions are the only parts of brachial plexus that don't give any branches. The cords lie below the clavicle near the second part of the axillary artery and the terminal branches lie low in the axilla near the third part of the axillary artery. Finally, the last terminal branches are as following. First, the muscular cutaneous nerve. A stands for the axillary nerve. R stands for the radial nerve. And M stands for the median nerve. The median nerve originates from two roots. The first is lateral root of median nerve and the second is the medial root of the median nerve. And finally, U stands for ulnar nerve and that completes our brachial plexus. So that's it guys, that was my way of looking at the brachial plexus and until next time, adios amigos.